All right, today, lesson 12a. Uh, this is actually the second lesson of unit two. Uh, today, adding integers. And I, I'm very aware that uh, some of you last year learned how to deal with integers, adding and subtracting and multiplying and dividing. Uh, so you're going to have to sort of bear with us as we go through some of the modeling techniques, because what you need to understand is that a modeling, much like tape diagrams did for the percent problems, they really serve two purposes for us. They are a tool to help us find an answer, but they're also in some way a proof of it's not just what you say it is, it's a way for you to prove that something is what you say that it is. So it serves more than one purpose. So much like the tape diagram problems where they would state to use a model, sometimes I'm going to ask you to use a model when you're adding or subtracting or multiplying or dividing. So you need to keep that in mind. So our focus today is adding integers. Uh, in the last lesson, we talked about absolute value and the idea of the additive inverse. Remember, when we are referring to additive inverse, we are referring to two numbers with a sum of zero. And one of the things you learned in sixth grade is the idea of opposite numbers. Well, opposite numbers, as it turns out, are additive inverses of each other because they do have a sum of zero. And so examples are like negative 3 and positive 3, 17 and negative 17. And of course, negative 324 and positive 324. And the idea of the additive inverse leads us to a very important topic when we are adding or subtracting integers, and that's the idea of something that we call a zero pair. And so that's the first thing that we're going to talk about today, this idea of a zero pair. So, you have a table that looks like this. We're going to go through the first uh, three or four together, and then I'll have you finish in the table. Number one, uh, it says a hydrogen atom has one proton and one electron. A proton has a positive charge, and an electron has a negative charge. And when we have a one positive charge and one negative charge, that means that the atom has a neutral charge because it has, because it has one zero pair. In other words, it has a sum of zero kind of like additive inverse. Number two, I took four steps forward and three steps back. So you can see a picture with footsteps there. And the net result is that you're one step ahead of where you started. And there are three zero pairs created there because when you take one step forward and one step backward, you're basically in the same place that you started. So you have three of those things that we're calling or referring to as zero pairs, and that's what we're logging over here. So let's, let's now go down to number three. It says, uh, I got a check in the mail for $1 million, so briefly you thought you were very rich, but then I got a bill that says I owe $1 million. So the model or picture, sometimes we can just write down numbers like this. So you were $1 million ahead, and then you got a bill saying you owed $1 million, your net result from that is that you now have no money. How many zero pairs were, were created in that situation? A million zero pairs, yes. All right, number four, I ate one candy bar with 200 calories, then I ate four apples with 50 calories each. How many calories have you eaten all together right there? 400. All right. One candy bar and four apples. The net result is you have eaten uh, 400 calories. Question for you. How many zero pairs were created in that situation? Zero zero pairs. All right. I would like you to finish off five, six, seven, and eight, and then we'll... Uh, Spend a minute or two with our shoulder partner comparing what we got for that. Number five, Joe found four quarters, but he had a hole in his pocket and lost one quarter. So maybe something like that. Uh, that would uh, The net result would be that Joe gained or had three more quarters than what he started with. And uh, there would be one zero pair there. And that, of course, would be this right here makes the zero pair. Number six, Lisa earned $8, then spent $6. Her net result is she gained $2 altogether. And, of course, that would make six zero pairs. 
Number seven, George gained 10 pounds, but then he went on a diet and lost 12 pounds. The net result there is that he's two pounds less than what he started, or where, when he started, and that would be 10 zero pairs. John took out for number eight, fifth, took $15 out of his bank account and then deposited 10. The net result is that he has $5 less than at the start, and there are 10 zero pairs there. So this idea of a zero pair comes into play a lot when we are adding or subtracting integers. So let's turn the page. Now, I, I'm not going to start on the problems on this page yet. I just want you to look up here. So here I have a picture uh, where I'm using symbols. And so my question to you is, what do you think this model represents as a number, as an integer, to be more specific? What do you think that model might represent? Minus one. You mean negative one? Is that right? I think it represents negative two. How many zero pairs do you see in that picture right there? Just say it. Four. Four. Um, right there. Four zero pairs. Now, they're called a zero pair for a reason. The sum of those two items makes zero. And so you can clearly see we have two negatives left over. So there are four zero pairs leaving two negatives. Another, another way of looking at it is there are two more negative symbols than positive symbols. How about this situation? What do you think that model might represent? Yes. Positive what? Positive three. And that would be correct. And the reason is because there are two zero pairs right there, leaving three positives. In other words, there are three more positive symbols than negative symbols. And it's that idea right there that will make this idea of what we're doing transition into positive and negative decimals and even somewhat to positive and negative fractions when we actually get there. All right, how about this one? Can I get somebody to shut the door, please? What do you think this model represents? Zero. And the reason is because there are four zero pairs leaving the, an equal number of positives and negatives. So we have nothing left over. How about this one? What does that represent? Yes. It represents negative two. All we have are two negatives in that picture there. Another way of looking at that is we still have two more negative symbols uh, than positive symbols. So. Let's now go to number one. And we're going to do number one together. And I can already see some of you just writing down answers. And remember, the idea behind modeling is it gives us a way to help us find the answer, but it also helps us prove why the answer is what we say that it is. So we're going to do this both with symbols and with number lines. And I don't want you to think that we're always going to do it that way. We're only going to do it that way a couple of days, and then we'll transition into uh, whatever way works best for you, even if that happens to be in your head, okay? So with symbols, here's how we would do this problem with symbols, and you should be writing this down. We start with three positive symbols because of the positive three. And we're going to add to that six negative symbols. We're adding to that six negative symbols. From that picture, it is clear, like in the previous questions I asked you, there are three zero pairs. So we can cross them out, if we like. And we can clearly see that we are left with three negative symbols. That's why, one reason why, three plus negative six is negative three. Okay? And one question that I'm going to continue to ask you as we get into decimals and fractions is this. Uh, do we have more positives or more negatives? Well, we clearly have more negatives. In fact, we have three more negatives than we do positives. And that's the reason why 3 plus negative 6 is negative 3. Okay? Let's now do this on a number line. So go over to your number line. And how we are supposed to model this with a number line is we always start at 0. And since the first number is a positive 3, we're going to go from 0 to positive 3. 
Now it says we're going to add to that negative 6. So that means we need to go the other direction, 6 units from the positive 3. And that leaves us, as you can clearly see, at negative 3. So using a number line can sometimes help us find a sum as well. Now the other thing that we should be able to see from the number line is also that uh, right here, the overlap, this also tells us how many zero pairs are found within the symbol method, okay? An overlap of three, which meant that there were three zero pairs. Okay, I think all of you get what to do. Can I go ahead and have you do number two, three, four, and five? And I'll check back with you in a few minutes, and we'll compare those with our shoulder partner. Number two, 12 plus negative four with symbols. We have 12 positives and four negatives that we're adding to that. We can easily see that we have four zero pairs, which leaves us with eight more positive symbols than negative symbols. And uh, those are the zero pairs that we crossed out. We can also think of those as additive inverses. And once again, we have eight more positives than negatives. That's one reason why it's positive eight with the number line. We start at 0, go out to 12, and then we're adding to that negative 4, so we go backward the other direction, 4 units, and that, of course, takes us to positive 8 right there. So when I say number line method, that's what I'm talking about. Number 3, and uh, once again, like in the previous one, all the 0 pairs are found in the overlap right here, those 4 zero pairs that we had. Number three is negative three plus negative nine. With symbols, we have three negatives and we're adding to that nine more negatives. No zero pairs in this picture. All we have are negatives. In fact, we have 12 more negatives than we do positives because we don't have any positives. That's one reason why the uh, sum is negative 12. With the number line, uh, we start at zero go out to negative 3, and we keep going in the negative direction, 9 more units. Now, I have a question for you. Why isn't there an overlap in this graph like there was in number 1 and number 2? Why? Because they're all negatives. Because they're all negatives? What's another reason? There aren't any zero pairs, exactly. So that's another reason why there is not an overlap here. All right, number four, negative six plus six. We start with ne six negatives and add to that six positives or the other way around. We have six zero pairs. What's the sum here? It's what? Zero. Zero. Because we have an equal number or the same number of positives and negatives. With the number line, we start at zero, go out to negative six, but then we have to turn around and go the other way because if that's the second number is a positive number. And the entire thing is overlapped here, the entire graph. That's why we have six, or one reason why we have six zero pairs there. All right, before we talk about number five, I, wasn't, I was supposed to uh, make you stop before number five, but I didn't, but that's okay. We'll get it figured out here. Um, what have we discussed so far? Turn to your shoulder partner. 30 seconds. What have we discussed so far? I heard things like adding integers, zero pairs, additive inverses, number line, symbols. All of those things are things that we have discussed so far. So basically, here's how we're supposed to finish off these problems. Now, I don't want to talk about number five until you finish six, seven, eight. But here's what we're going to do. Uh, you're going to use symbols. And when I have you shoulder partner, you're going to explain how you came to your answer using symbols. Okay. And then you're also going to use a number line. And when I have you shoulder partner, you're going to explain how you came to your sum using a number line for each one. Okay? Are we clear about what you're going to do when you're shoulder partner 5, 6, 7, and 8? Yes or no? Yes. Let's try that again. Yes or no? Yes. All right. Thank you. Go ahead and do 6, 7, and 8 because you've already done number 5. And then we're going to shoulder partner. And then we're going to do some explaining uh, for each of those. So once again, you're just basically doing the same thing that you did in 1 through 4, 
It's just that every other problem has a vertical number line instead of a horizontal number line. That doesn't really change what we do. The difference here is we're going to shoulder partner what we came up with, and we're going to, going to explain how we think our answer is what it is using both methods. Okay? Got about another minute and a half. All right, number five, 11 plus negative four. So the sum of 11 and negative four is positive seven with symbols. Uh, the reason is because you have seven more positives than negatives. You had four zero pairs. On a number line, it's because you start at zero, go to 11, go backwards four, and you end up with pos at positive seven on your number line. Number six, the sum of negative three and 14 is positive 11. The reason with symbols is because you have 11 more positives than negatives. In other words, you had three zero pairs. With the number line, you start at zero, go left to negative three, and then go back the other way, 14 units, and that leaves you at positive 11. Number seven, the sum of negative 17 and three is negative 14, because with symbols, you have 14 more negatives than positives. In other words, you had three zero pairs, leaving you with 14 negatives. On a number line, you start at zero, go left to negative, or in this one, you go in the downward direction to negative 17, and then go up three and that leaves you at negative 14 on the number line. And then number eight, the sum of negative eight and 15 is positive seven. With uh, symbols, you have seven more positives than negatives. You would have eight zero pairs there on a number line. You go to the left eight units and then to the right 15 units and that leaves you at positive seven on your number line.